All right. Thank you so much for staying with the Monday Report. We're about to get into this discussion. And joining me live from Nairobi is Dr. Patrick Amoth, is the Director General, Ministry of Health. DG, thank you so much for making time for us this evening. Good evening, Trevor, and thanks for having me on the Monday Report. Great. Quick question, sir. You gave a picture of possible 10,000 cases of COVID-19 by end of April. What is the basis of your projection on these numbers? Uh, the numbers we gave you this afternoon are based on our modeling, uh, mathematical modeling, which is based basically on four parameters. One is the susceptibility to getting the infection. This being a new virus, it means all Kenyans are susceptible to getting the infection. The second parameter is the number exposed and incubating the disease. The third parameter in the modeling is the infectivity of the virus based on studies from China, it clearly indicates that one person is capable of transmitting the infection to four new people. And then the fourth and final parameter is the number recovered or removed. The number recovered are then not, be, not capable of transmitting the disease to other people or the people who have been removed into quarantine and isolation are then not able to transmit the disease to other people. So based on that, we came up with the number of 10,000 with a margin of error of 0 0.05. However, it is not all doom and gloom. If we go ahead and practice what we have been preaching as a ministry, what His Excellency the President stated on two occasions before, what the Cabinet Secretary has continued to state at each and every press conference of hand washing, use of the sanitizers, social distancing, we can be able to bring this number to as low as 50%. However, if we continue with business as usual, then this could be the reality and it could even go beyond the numbers that we have shared with you this afternoon. DG, if those numbers go beyond what you're sharing, even with the numbers that you just shared, it means they will overwhelm the health system. What is the plan going forward? What are the practical plans you're putting in place, especially for the counties? The plans that we are putting in place, one, allow me to thank His Excellency the President for committing one billion extra Kenya shillings in this fight for the recruitment of additional healthcare workers. This will be able to go a long way in addressing the gaps that we have in terms of human resource. We also continue with the capacity building of healthcare workers as our frontline soldiers in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, of course, uh, we continue to pass risk communication messages to the public on the appropriate measures that they need to take so that the numbers don't tip over to what we have projected. But what about the counties? What is the plan for the counties? The training and recruitment of the additional healthcare workers, of course, will be distribu distributed mainly to the count counties. Of course, the training is also happening at the county level and also at the community level using even the community health volunteers. And I think Kenyans have really been very, very helpful because we are even getting reports from the villages. So and so came back from place X and he has not been in, a, 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 in quarantine. We have seen him moving left, right and center. They are calling us, meaning that this information is reaching the lowest level of our society. And all of us are working together to ensure that we keep the numbers within uh, manageable and cl controllable levels. So right now, DG, you're talking about training, which is a good thing, but the nurses are complaining that they don't have the personal protective equipment, which is the PPEs. How many have been bought and where are they? Thanks, Trevor, for the question regarding the PPEs. And I want to thank the nurses and the other healthcare workers who are at the front in the fight against the coronavirus disease. They have sacrificed their time from their families. They are doing a wonderful job, and we need to continue to support them. We have tried to ensure that we have adequate supplies of personal protective equipment. However, remember, Trevor, also that these are single-use items. Like, for example, last week on Thursday, we made orders thinking that these uh, supplies will be able to take us to Monday. By Sunday, we had run out. We are literally running out of the personal protective equipment. Uh, together with this is the global supply chain 
challenges because most of these things come from outside the country. And that is why working with the Ministry of Trade and Industry, we have identified local capacity, especially from River Tex and Kiko Tex in Kitui, who are trying to manufacture local, locally the personal protective equipment on a trial basis which we are going to analyze for suitability for use. If this one happens and they meet the quality criteria set by the ministry and its organs, this will be a game changer in terms of availability of personal protective equipment. So before that happens, what is the deficit right now and how many do we have? Well, this, as at uh, yesterday, uh, we were running short. Again, today we had supplies coming in through our supply chain, through the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. And we have supplies again for the next uh, two to three weeks, which we are quickly going to distribute to the counties, but of course also based on a risk profile. Because as at now, Nairobi and Mombasa remain the main hotspots. And therefore, the bulk of the PPEs will still go to Nairobi and Mombasa. If there's any county that has not received, uh, we are making arrangements to ensure that each and every county receives its full share of the PPEs that they require to be able to serve the patients that they may, may come their way. What about the ventilators, DG? Because that is one of the most essential equipment when it comes to fighting COVID-19. How many do we have? How many have been purchased? What is the deficit right now? Thank you, Trevor, for that question. Let me start by explaining to Kenyans what a ventilator is. A ventilator is basically an intelligent ma machine that can be able to uh, carry out your breathing process on your behalf if you are incapacitated in one way or, or the other. Uh, it is different from the oxygen mask that you put on our face and, or, or the nasal cannula that you put on your nose to be able to help you breathe. So basically the number of ventilators that we have in the country mirror the number of ICU beds which stands at about 540. And if you look at the case analysis and our projections based on our modeling, we are looking at 10,000 10, cases coming forward by 30th of April. Out of these 10,000, 8,000 or 80 percent of them will get a mild disease which may not even require hospitalization but may require you to be kept in isolation uh, because maybe where you come from. 15 percent of the population that is about 1,500 will have a moderate to severe disease which may require supplemental oxygen support and only 5 percent of uh, the, this 10,000 which is about 500 will require critical care in ICU, therefore requiring the need of ventilatory support. If uh, we take into consideration the measures that we have outlined, the hand washing, the social distancing, then our numbers will remain within the capacity of our ICU and ventilatory capacity. However, if we, con if we continue to ignore the messages that come from the ministry, from the government, then it is potentially possible that the numbers will be exceeded. And it is in th with this in mind that talking with the other governments, like the government of Israel has uh, promised to give us support in terms of uh, ventilators, the ministry itself, through support of the World Bank, is going to buy an additional 100 ventilators which should be in the country by this week. Other countries, including China, have promised our support. And because of this challenge, we are also looking at capability of local manufacturing of ventilators. And we are in touch with Jomo Kenyatta University of Technology, Dida and Kimath University, to explore possibility of local manufacture of ventilators. Okay. So if we take into consideration the measures that we have put into place, we are basically within the numbers that will require ventilatory support. But with additional support coming in from our, our friendly government and what the government has put in our pipeline, uh, if we take these measures into place, we will not be overrun. Okay. So as it stands, DG, how many health workers have been trained and where are they deployed? We have trained health care work, uh, workers from the national level to the county level. 
and targeting all the 47 counties. Initially, we started with the 14 uh, counties that uh, were marked as highest risk. So the healthcare workers that have been trained are more than 4,000, distributed across the 47 counties. And we have gone ahead also to train non-healthcare workers. We have trained the police. We have trained prisons. We have trained parliament. We have trained Red Cross. We have trained Safaricom because they are supporting us in our call center. And training will continue. However, we also have to balance the training of the healthcare workers with the ordinary service delivery that has to go on. Mothers still have to deliver. Immunization services have to continue. TB services have to be offered on a daily basis. HIV services, maternal and newborn child health services have to continue. So as we train, we also don't want to put at risk the progress that we have made in the other sectors of the health uh, healthcare service provision. And that is the main concern for the nurses because they're wondering once they've been trained, what is, how is the government going to protect their people back at home, their loved ones? Uh, one way of protect, protecting the nurses, of course, is by giving them capacity building so that we are specifically focusing on infection prevention control measures, which are basic things, hand washing. Then the number two, we are going to ensure continuous supply of personal protective equipment, as I've outlined earlier. If we carry these things into practice throughout, then the nurses are assured, not only the nurses, but the entire healthcare workers are assured of their total protection. DG, there's someone who's asking, Eric here, he's saying, please ask the DG what he meant when he said that our health system is the weakest in dealing with corona and what he intends to do to strengthen it. Uh, 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 when we talked in the afternoon, we said uh, healthcare systems in Africa are fragile because if you look at our human to uh, population, human capital in terms of healthcare workers, if you look at the number of facilities, if you look at our ICU beds, if you look at our referral system, these are very fragile things and it was tested during the 2014 Ebola outbreak in West Africa. And you saw how infections spread very, very fast. This is not unique to us, it is a challenge, even countries that have very strong healthcare systems. You have seen what has happened in Italy. You have seen what is happening in Spain. Those are countries which have very strong healthcare systems, but they have become overwhelmed because of the numbers that they had not anticipated to come in the fall as this pandemic spreads. So what I meant is basically that we have gaps which we need to be able and the only way to be able to address those gaps is by prevention, prevention, so that we don't have uh, a surge in numbers like what you have had in Italy, Spain, US, which can easily overrun our system. All right, DG Engineer Richard Keino is asking, what next for the survivors? Because I hear that the virus recurs after some time. How do you take tests across the country? Uh, for the survivors... Yes, once you, once you are admitted in the isolation center, we treat you, we do two uh, repeated tests. If we have two consecutive negative tests, we say you have recovered. But when you go back uh, to your home, of course, you don't have that immunity. So there's that risk of reinfection. And this has happened in China, it has happened in Hong Kong, it has happened in Singapore and Japan. And therefore we uh, we implore you to continue taking infection prevention control measures, the hand washing, the use of the sanitizers, the social distancing, and I think for them, because they have had, had an actual experience, these are going to be very, are very good ambassadors to be able to convince the rest of us why we need to do all these things. DG, is there a chance that someone can be sent to recuperate from home after having tested negative? After having tested negative, yes, there's a po possibility with the proper risk communication and proper assessment, it is potentially possible that you could be sent to recuperate from home. And also remember when the numbers, when you get overrun, like what is happening in Italy, you cannot have everybody in the hospital. Those with mild infections will have to be managed at home because the health facilities will not be available to 
accommodate each and everybody. And you also mentioned that there are 20 institutions that are supposed to be part of the quarantine area in the counties. Are there going to be health officials stationed in each and every one of them? Yes, and today we had a meeting with the Council of Governors, the CEC so for Health, to be able to map up the, the facilities that we can easily be able to use as isolation and quarantine facilities. In this country, you are blessed that because we have boarding schools, which we could quickly deploy as quarantine and even isolation facilities with proper mapping and proper human capital to be able to man the facilities. These are some of the things we are looking at. But not that, that notwithstanding, we are also looking at capacity of deploying isolation quarantine facilities in our stadium like uh, Kasarani Stadium, Nyayo National Stadium, Moi Stadium in Mombasa, and any other available facility we can be able to quickly use uh, very basic tentage material to be able to put up even a temporary isolation facility, a temporary hospital that can be able to take care of cases if the numbers re increase. All right, DG, stay with me. I'm taking a quick break here on the Monday report. When we come back, I'll play the videos that were sent from the public asking you questions in regard to preparedness. We're back in just a bit.